Jen, at the forefront of Amazon's legal issues is the FTC antitrust lawsuit. What are the key issues at stake and risks for the business? Yeah, that's right, Roger. I mean, this was a suit that was anticipated for so long because the current chair of the Federal Trade Commission has been really open about her view that Amazon engages in unlawful monopolistic conduct. This suit in particular is focusing on two practices of Amazon that allegedly stifle competition and result in increased prices, not just for consumers, but also for the sellers on the platform uh, and to some extent degraded quality on Amazon.com as well. And this is about Amazon's practice of what's called uh, anti-discounting or price parity clauses, some call it. And it's basically a requirement on sellers on its platform that they offer the lowest price on Amazon as well as outside of Amazon. So if they're on Etsy or if they're on their own website offering up a product, they have to also provide that price on Amazon. They, they can't undercut it outside. And the second thing is that sellers on Amazon's marketplace must use Amazon's fulfillment services in order to get Amazon Prime, which is very valuable to sellers. They need it. And as a result of both of these practices, the FTC claims, Amazon's able to thwart competition and prices go up because it's more expensive for sellers to sell on the platform and prices to consumers go up and even the price for, for fulfillment goes up. And what is the status and when might, might we hear a decision? Yeah, you know, this has been talked about for two years, but yet the suit is really new. I mean, it was just filed in September. Antitrust monopolization suits take a really long time. They can be very slow. Um, so I don't even think we're going to get to trial to the suit in this suit possibly until 2025. And I think we should expect it to be a few years before we're gonna have some kind of a decision. And in these kinds of cases, we generally expect the losing entity to appeal. So they can go on for even five years before there's a final outcome. Thank you, Jane. Matt, you're closely following two other significant lawsuits facing Amazon, the prime cancellation issue and a class action relating to Alexa and the collecting of, vo of customer voices. What are the key risks here? Yeah, Roger, thanks. These are the kind of cases that a company with millions of users inevitably faces, and they can be significant. Let, let, let's talk about the Amazon Prime suit first. This is a suit using a law called the Restore Online Shoppers Confidence Act, in which the Federal Trade Commission is alleging that Amazon has duped millions of its consumers into subscribing and, and it has failed to provide what the law requires, and that is a simple cancellation process. And in theory, this could be a big deal for, for Amazon. The law allows penalties of, of up to $50,000 per violation. There are 100 million Amazon Prime users in the United States. You do that math and you get numbers with lots of zeros at the end if Amazon were to get in trouble. In the end, though, I think this is a pretty weak lawsuit brought by the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission itself has said that the law isn't very clear on what is a simple cancellation process. And given that, I think Amazon is more than likely to be able to show that its process of cancellation is simple, is, uh, simple enough. It only requires uh, a handful of clicks at most um, in order to, to cancel the service. The second suit involves Amazon's Alexa service, and it's a privacy class action brought under an Illinois biometric law. Again here, potentially very significant damages because the law allows $1,000 per violation. You multiply that times you know, 3 million users in Illinois, for example, and you, you, again, you get to a large number. But here too, I think Amazon can, can, can contain this risk. And the reason is most privacy lawsuits of this scale settle for less than $100 per user. And so even if you consider the worst case for Amazon, I calculate that the company won't face liability larger than about $400 million. And given that Amazon's motion to dismiss was barely dismissed, according to the judge, I think more likely than not that the company will be able to avoid the worst case. And advertising is one of Amazon's fastest growing businesses. I know it's estimated by BI to re could potentially reach $100 billion by 2028. Is there some regulatory risks associated with this new growth avenue for them? 
Yeah, I, I put this in the category of a risk to monitor. Uh, it's not an imminent material threat, but but you know, the digital ad business in the United States has been dominated by Meta and by Alphabet, but Amazon is rising fast in that category. And one reason why these companies have done so well is that it's it's almost completely unregulated. Uh, and so there is a risk that that changes. Congress is pushing for a data privacy law. The Federal Trade Commission is, is, is pushing to adopt rules that if Congress won't regulate in this space, okay, we will. And so that potentially creates risks for, for a company like Amazon, which is doing so well in this sector. In my view, though, I think there, there's reason, again, to think that Amazon can contain this risk. I don't think Congress is going to be able to reach consensus on disruptive forms of, of regulation. And the Federal Trade Commission's process to make rules is very tedious, very difficult. And even if they can get to the end of the road in that process, there's a tremendous legal risk at the end of that process where those rules could get struck down in court. If they are disruptive to companies like Amazon, I think that's very likely. Jen and Matt, thank you.